everyone, Josh Neighbors here, Locked On Big 12 Podcast. It is the 21st of February, 2023, and on today's show, some reaction to our show that we had yesterday with Spencer McLaughlin of Locked On Pac-12, Pete Thamel burying the Pac-12 in a new article that he wrote, Where's That Situation At?, and Kansas picks up a major win in their bid to become Big 12 champions here in 2023 when it comes to men's basketball. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Once again, Locked On Big 12 Podcast. I am your host, Josh Neighbors. Thank you guys for watching the show. Make sure you guys subscribe. You guys can do do so here on YouTube, Locked On Big 12. Make sure you guys also uh, get your podcast, get this podcast, wherever you all get your podcast you guys can do that stitcher spotify apple podcast all of those places follow us on twitter at lo big 12 you guys can follow me at josh neighbors underscore today's show is brought to you all always as always by the FanDuel sportsbook number one sportsbook in america all right so yesterday's show i put this out in the audio version i did not mention this on the video version so Uh, yesterday's show, we had Spencer McLaughlin of Locked On Pac-12 on. And uh, I really wanted to let him go, make a lot of the points that he wanted to make about where the Pac-12 is and and kind of where things are heading. Um, I selectively pushed back on stuff. There are a lot of things that I could have pushed back on uh, that I did not. I saw maybe a comment or two about it, not not a whole lot, but just wanted to let him get that, that out there. And I came away from that conversation yesterday realizing that maybe there are people like Spencer who are not as concerned for the health and the well-being of the Pac-12 as maybe, say, a Pete Thamel, a Dennis Dodd, a John Wilner, uh, you know, um, Andrew Marchand, right? All of these reporters, and, and I, I chuck myself in that group as well. And so here, here's what I'll say. Spencer yesterday was was not receptive to the idea that the Big 12 would be adding – some of those Pac-12 schools. He's like the Big 12. Uh, you know, the amount of research money these schools would lose would be significant. Now, look, folks, I don't really know much about the research money. It's not really somewhere that I've spent a lot of time. Obviously, I cover athletics. Uh, I cover athletics for an FM radio show. I cover athletics still currently for Sirius XM as I'm winding down there. I cover athletics for Locked On Big 12. You guys can see where I'm going with this. Uh, and I've, you know, I've called games college athletics as well. So I have a lot tied into college athletics. Do I know much about research money? No. Um, have I seen research money mentioned at all in any of the articles that I have been reading about conference expansion? No. Now, are we just not doing our homework? I'm not sure, but I have not seen that as a ma- excuse me as a major major concern when it comes to well, the Big Twelve could never pick off Pac-12 schools because of research money. Here's what we can say: I think pretty confidently. The Pac-12 schools would love to remain with the Pac-12 because that is where they are. That is where they have been. That is where they want to be. They want to maintain that regionality. They want to maintain that status. Uh, I guess academically, they want to maintain their rivalries, all of those things. I believe that is commendable. I believe it's understandable. I believe that if we were all in their shoes, we would feel the same exact way uh, about wanting to maintain that position. So there you go. There's that. Uh, I also maintain that I think that they're going to get a going to get a television deal done. Now, each day I feel less and less uh, good about that for the Pac-12, but I think that is where it's headed. The value will it be equal to the Big 12? I don't believe so. Uh, I, I think that ship has has maybe sailed. What I do think though that is that there is a certain point where the Pac-12 schools, some of them at least, will say this is no longer financially viable. Uh, I think to me, if we're talking about the Big 12 being guaranteed around $31 million a year, and look, they distributed around 42, you know, I think if the gap fell somewhere to around $10 million a season per school, I think that's where I might start drawing the line. Uh, Why did I pick 10 million? Josh, why did you pick 10 million? Well, I don't have a big brain, right? So eight figures to me seems like a pretty rational point. If it's a $5 million, $6 million gap, and this is where I kind of agree with Spencer, sure, sure, 5 to $6 million, that's not tenable. 
But you know what? If, if it kind of allows us to remain in the zones that we want to remain in, then it's fine. I would say that maybe Oregon and Washington would not be cool with that. And I saw some of you all commented this yesterday. They might not be. But we're really looking at four corner schools right now, I think, in terms of expansion. So what do Oregon and Washington want is one piece. What are the four corner schools? Another piece. Uh, another piece also is they want to remain there. The next piece is, though, we have to acknowledge this. Washington, or, or, or It sounds like Arizona State and Arizona at some point in times independently have expressed some kind of interest or exploratory, whatever it is, uh, in you know, the Big 12. Had that conversation. I'm sure everybody in the league has had that conversation. All right, so I think there is that as well. That is there. But once again, also they want to remain in the Big 12. The next part of this, all right, this is my take. This is this is my thought on where the Big 12 goes from all of this. So there's the Pac-12 side of everything, right? Just laid it out. I think there is a number out there where it stops becoming tenable. I think there's a number out there where you start making the call to the Big 12. If you are the Big 12 now, the Big 12 should be focused on one thing and one thing only, and that should be picking off Pac-12 schools. They should not be concerned about Boise State. They should not be concerned about Fresno State. They should not be concerned about San Diego State. Even Gonzaga, I would put on the back burner. USF, Memphis, whoever else you want to say, Tulane, that should all go to the back burner. The primary focus for the Big 12 Conference should be picking off Pac-12 schools. Why? Number one, I think Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and Arizona State are good fits. I think they make sense. 1A is, I've maintained this, I will keep saying this. The disruption of the Pac-12 will lead to two things. Number one, uh, you could get Oregon and Washington, which are significant brands. They are significant college football brands. One lies in a major city, Seattle. One is Nike's college football program, Oregon. I've maintained this, I will keep saying it. They are valuable commodities. And while they might not be uh, on average on par with per school value for the Big Ten, which is like astronomically high, they would be on on par per school value for the Big 12. There is no doubt about it. I think that Texas Tech and TCU and Oklahoma State fans and Kansas State fans and Kansas and, and the Iowa State and, you know, I'm just listing schools at this point. I think we can all agree that Oregon and Washington are just as valuable, if not a bit more valuable as television brands than some of those schools. Now, look, TCU made a college football championship. They have a top 25 basketball program. Kansas could be in the process of winning back-to-back national championships in college basketball. Texas Tech has a massive following, all of that stuff. But let's be honest, folks. Oregon, Washington, big followings, big-time stuff. That's why they're in conversations. We're talking about them with the Big Ten. That's why it seemed reasonable to say that because they are big time brands. They are better brands than some of the brands the Big Ten has. They are better than Maryland, better than Rutgers, better, I would say, than your, you know, uh, your Indiana's when it comes to uh, Washington or Oregon for basketball and football is certainly a better brand. I know Indiana basketball, huge, but come on, in the aggregate, and football really is what drives the ship here. Uh, if we're talking about dominant programs, Indiana's got good basketball, but it's not a dominant program. It hasn't been for a long time. Talking about those schools, you know, the Iowas of the world. Like I would, I would value in Oregon a little bit more than I value in Iowa, right? There's no big television markets in Iowa. So um, I think with that, like that, that is, that's where those schools, you know, that's why I've been those conversations for big 10. It'd be valuable to get them. I really think it would be. So getting those four corner schools expanding, huge. Getting Oregon and Washington, if possible, huge. The demise of the Pac-12. Not just because it's the Pac-12, but the demise of a comparable television partner, right? Uh, Let's just take, for example, what's happening, or a television partner, television competitor, product competitor. Let's just take advantage, uh, let's just take an example right now. All right, let's just go with the XFL and the USFL. Um, I'm not sure it's really going to like matter in the long run, but don't we just think generally speaking ratings for one of these spring leagues would be better if there weren't two spring leagues, right? Uh, competing, you know, for eyes for football right now. Don't we just generally think one would do better? Yeah. You'd, you'd probably think that when it comes to two teams in a market, you know, if there was just one New York team, Yankees or Mets, they would, you know, they get massive followings as it is, but there was one, it would be, you know, it'd be better off. You know, I, I think that 
we can all, you know, and people say, well, the Yankees are the brand. Yeah, Yankees are the national brand. Dude, New York is damn near a Met City. I'll tell you that, man. New York, damn near a Met City. Now, Manhattan, sure, whatever. But you you start spreading out. You go to other boroughs, man, tons of Mets fans everywhere you go. Right? So it's, it's talking, you know, talking about, hey, if we're talking about two comparable things, you know, uh, the Big 12 being able to steal those schools, offer late night games, and not have to deal with another competitor makes them more valuable especially if you're adding some of the valuable things that that competitor had. It's like any hostile takeover, I guess you could have, right? Uh, let's, you know, any two companies merge, right? An airline, two airlines merge. You take the good planes you want. Um, you know, you take, I guess, some of the crews that you want. You, you get the flights that you want, right, to certain places. And you cut off the dead weight, the extra that you don't need. And, you, and your brand becomes more valuable, right? I think it's a good, I think airlines actually was the right example I was looking for. It took me a few times. But we ended up finding the right example, folks. So you all understanding what I'm saying here with this. And I think that's the most valuable part. That is why if I'm Brett Yormark and I am the Big 12 brass, I am trying to sell the presidents of, of these Big 12 schools, the boards of regents, the athletic directors, the decision makers, because I know they're, they're called something different at every school. I'm trying to sell them on focus on the Pac-12. And also what I'm trying to sell them is, them on is there might be a short-term loss of funds, but when it comes to the next television contract time, guys, and we're asking who is offering late night games, the Big Ten can when USC and UCLA are home, the Big 12 can, if let's just say they could find a way to wrap up all six. Oregon, Washington, and hell, maybe you take, maybe you take Oregon State and Washington State at some point down the line, you know, like and not down the line, but maybe that's something that you do if you're really, if you're like focused on offering late night games, right? Um, I think that's kind of what you're talking about there. Maybe even those, those would be valuable brands. I know they're not super valuable brands, but at least they're power five right now. And let's be honest, they're actually the football programs have been really decent uh, lately. I, I think Washington State, you know, I know they've had different coaches, and uh, but they, they've had some real periods of success. And Oregon State and John Smith, John Smith, my God, what a coach. What a coach. Great program. Uh, we're seeing with their, I think, 10-win season again this year for them. I digress, though. You know, Arizona, Arizona State, Oregon, Colorado, Utah, BYU. You have the opportunity to be playing plenty of games in the late window that ESPN wants to fill. That's the one ace in the hole that the Pac-12 has right now. And I might tell them, I might say, hey guys, look, if I'm Brett Yormark saying, look, there might be some short-term financial loss to adding all of these schools, sure. But when the next television contract comes around and we offer 11 a.m. kickoffs and we offer, you know, let's just go Eastern time. We offer the noon Eastern kickoffs and we offer 10 p.m. Eastern kickoffs because they kind of do everything in East Coast time. But if we're talking central, they offer 11 a.m. kickoffs and 9 p.m. kickoffs. If you can be that that conference, that brand, and there's no more Pac-12, and once again, there are going to be three conferences that go to market before the ACC becomes that fourth, right? The 2035 area is, is my kind of next deadline because that's when the ACC comes available. Let's see what happens. But you have a chance to hit market once, and if you want to pull the move again, twice with a double, we'll call it, you know, if you want to do the double, you could do twice if you undercut like you did last time. And so I think that is where I am 100% on board if the Big 12 just focuses so hard on Pac-12 schools. I've, you know, and credit the guys at 365, it's a lot of fun. You know, I saw J.D. Pacal at a fun one talking about USF and people talk about Memphis. That's a great conversation. But, but to me, and maybe we'll hit on that soon eventually, but if, you, if it's me, if I'm running things, I am so laser focused on the Pac-12 schools because of the implications that it has. There are four exciting brands, sure. Would love to have them in the fold for a multitude of reasons. But the implications of crushing a competitor and reaping the rewards of what's in that conference and those rewards being teams that play in time slots that the, the television partners that we know they want, you're in, you're in a really good position. So if I'm Brett Yormark, I know some people are, uh, Pete Dammel told us yesterday on SiriusXM, I'm kind of in the rocking chair, sit and wait mode. I think that's the right way to put it, I guess. But the phone is the phone's in your lap, right? If you're rocking, you know, if we're rocking back and forth. The phone needs to be in the lap. We need to be up calling. Now, if some of you all disagree with me, that's fine. Put it in the comment section. I, I love to hear what you all think. But 
pardon me if I don't want to be late, you know, if I just want all the focus to solely be on the Pac-12 schools, because I think right now there is a narrative momentum that is heading, heading, and I think sometimes perception is reality. I think the Pac-12 presidents and ADs and the boards of regents, they will feel that heat. They will feel that pressure. And one more place where I break with um, uh, with Spencer is, I don't think George Klyavkov has done a good job. I think he's been in a, in a good spot, a, a bad spot, but I think he has not done a great job. They are not well positioned. They got undercut by the Big 12. The Big 12 made it happen, and the Pac-12 is in a dangerous spot now. I'm going to use a quick word from our sponsors, and then I want to hear. I want you all to hear what uh, Pete Thamel had to say about this. Today's show is brought to you all by the folks at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Hey, maybe they can put out some odds on Pac-12's demise. And once again, I hate to do that, but and I'm not rooting for it in any any sense of that. But uh, you know, the the maybe they'll put some odds on that. You guys can go to the FanDuel Sportsbook, FanDuel.com slash locked on college or locked on, excuse me, FanDuel.com slash locked on. If you guys are watching on YouTube, you can see it right here. When you guys do, uh, you guys can uh, deposit, I think it's up to 150 bucks, what it is right now. Uh, or if you guys place $10 wager, it'll give you guys $150 back in free bets. You guys can bet on the Big 12 action happening tonight in college hoops. You guys can bet on the NBA, NHL, all of those things at bet online and bet online or no, bet online at fanduel i've done it again fanduel.com the best sports book in america the best interface in america no doubts about that all right so what did pete thamble have to say of espn.com because he dropped i mean he dropped an absolute not bomb but like a banger of a line i want to read you guys from his story yesterday so this story from espn.com uh was titled realignment chatter Colon, how the Pac-12 holds the key to it all. Now, holds is a relative term. Uh, I guess trying to grab the key is one way. It's an ESPN Plus article, but if you're a Big 12 fan, you definitely have ESPN Plus. And folks, I know we hate it all sometimes, but I think it's a fantastic service. I don't mind paying for good games and good journalism. So there you go. Uh, This is what he said. He said, what happens now? And this is what Pete Thamel of ESPN had to say about George Klyavkov's visit last week to Southern Methodist University in Dallas. Uh, (laughs) He said the biggest signs of panic have come from the league itself in relation to the PAC 12. First commissioner George Klyavkov and two other conference officials visited SMU earlier this month in a 48 hour advertisement of the league's weakness and lack of self awareness My God, I'll read that one more time. George Klyavkov and two other conference officials visited SMU earlier this month in a 48-hour advertisement of the league's weakness and lack of self-awareness. By exploring SMU, the Pac-12 is acknowledging that what it's attempting to sell networks isn't good enough with 10 schools. And SMU is a, is a, uh, a fine school with modest tradition, isn't a significant value add to drive up the league's overall value. Uh, For example, you know, the way that USC and UCLA did for the big 10, it's really an inventory filler and a nice market, a move that was expected, but didn't need to be advertised with an administrative parade. Then the leagues issue, uh, issue the dreaded vote of confidence statement that its schools are quote united and our commitment to one another. By doing it, the league reminded everyone that it could indeed fall apart. Tough stretch. He says the bottom line the pat for the Pac-12, the television contract numbers Klyavkov is, uh, delivers in the upcoming weeks are paramount to the league's survival. If the numbers are decent, some sort of temporary solution can be constructed with a deal expected to be in the five-year range. That's certainly possible. Commissioners are ultimately judged by their television deals. Nothing else matters, especially in this case, as there has been a clear disconnect between Pac-12 hopes and the market realities. No one is expecting anything in the $40 million per school range anymore. Getting something in the $30 million range, similar to the Big 12, could keep the league duct taped together. So it's interesting, right? I want to I want to take a snapshot because that line is devastating. It's a devastating, crushing line. You know, it does show the, the weakness, and I think it highlights something that's really interesting. Let's just say the Pac-12 were to get thirty million dollars a year, and look, 
I think the narrative would change if they did. I don't think anybody believes they are right now, but let's just say they did. $30 million per school per year. Um, he just used the word duct taped. And I think that's interesting because it still feels like if they got a $30 million deal, that thing is duct taped. Why is that? Well, we know the Big 12 has interest in some of their schools. We know the Big 10 could have further interest in some of their schools, Oregon and Washington. We know that the ACC might have interest in some of those schools, maybe Oregon and Washington down the line. And <laughs> they'd definitely be ripe for a super conference if they wanted to pick up, you know, they were going that way or super leagues if were going that direction. They could be ripe for that as well. So while the television numbers for the, uh, the money numbers could be comparable to the Big 12, the narrative surrounding each league is still going to be, wow, the Big 12 got this deal done. Like, I don't think if the Pac-12 gets a TV deal, TV deal done, everybody says, wow, big loser, the Big 12. Now, they're a loser in the sense that they can't add more schools in the immediate that are Pac-12 schools. Sure. Fair. But in the immediate, um, you know, they nothing hurt them, right? Nothing, nothing was really was hurt right there. Meanwhile, the Pac-12, well, they most likely have to go a lot of streaming, there's going to be some people who think, hey, they've been hurt a bit. They have been damaged a bit. And maybe not even like, you know, league's damage, but the kind of the ego of the league, it feels like it's already damaged. I'm not sure how much further the damage is going to be there as well. I think that's something that we have to track very, very closely. All right, one more word from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. Go to built.com today. That's built.com. Use the promo code LOCK15. Or now you guys can go to Sam's Club and Walmart. That's right. Four packs available at uh, Walmart. 13 packs. Baker's Dozen for you. Available over at Sam's Club. Go check that out. They've got new flavors. Built Bars are delicious. They're covered in chocolate. They're good and they're good for you. Uh, low on sugar, delicious taste, plenty of protein. They're good in the morning for a breakfast. They're good for a dessert. They're good for a pre-meal snack. They're good for a post-meal uh, or a a uh, pre-workout snack. They're good for a post-workout snack. Check them out. Built.com today. All right. So yesterday, guys, two games in the Big 12, two big results, but let's go with the Kansas and the TCU result. Kansas 63, TCU uh, 58. Now, TCU were favorites in this game. I should have put this. I, I, I screwed up. I've had so, I've lost some confidence a bit in some of my picks. Now, this year... I'm still doing really well uh, on the season as a whole with the bread truck picks. We are, uh, let's see, 22, 14, and one. So we're eight games above 500. That puts you pretty well against the spread. But last night, I know a lot of the sharps were on TCU. The public was on KU. I loved KU last night. Um, 63, 58, a tough, hard nose defensive game a game where Kansas wins despite shooting 18% from three. How did they do it? Well, their, their defense in the perimeter was just really, really good. TCU is a team that can struggle at times shooting from three. Mike Miles looked rusty. Damian Ball had a rough game. Emmanuel Miller had a rough game. And so as good as these guys were the other day, uh, them being TCU, they were not able to. I was really impressed with the way that the Jayhawks were able to kick that rough, you know, uh, kick the rough first half of the day, explode, go on the road, and then once again get a tough win. Grady Dick uh, led all scorers in this game with 19 points, even though it was not a pretty 19, you know, seven 18s, that's fine. Uh, Kevin McCuller, 15, six of 13 and seven boards. Jalen Wilson, rough night, but the rebounding was a big difference for him. And he was, he had some foul issues later on in that game, but still, Impressive performance for him. Why does this matter so much, guys? Because now Kansas, it, it, it's, a, it's not smooth sailing. It never is in this conference. But Kansas has the inside track to become, uh, to win the Big 12. Baylor has a game left against, so Texas still has to go to Baylor. That is one game that is still left in this season. Uh, th this is a tough stretch for, for Texas. Iowa State at Baylor at TCU and KU. Kansas, the rest of the way, they've got the, the Texas game in the very end of the season. But they've got West Virginia, Texas Tech, both at home and at Texas. If they hold serve at home, that game against Texas is going to be for an outright Big 12 championship uh, at this point in time, right? Now, I know Texas is tied with them, but you have to figure they go to TCU 
and they go to Baylor. Now, look, if they win both those games, even if they lose to Kansas at home, give Rodney Terry the Big 12 Coach of the Year trophy now. But, I mean, to me, guys, hate saying the league's all, all, all the way over, but, I mean, is, is Texas going to make it through that stretch? They've got coming up with road games against TCU and Baylor and then a home game against – also, I forgot to mention Iowa State in there too, right? They still have to play Iowa State. Are they going to make it through that stretch untouched? I don't know. But the problem is 2-2 two and two is not good enough to win the league outright. They're going to have to go 3-1 and one to do it. Uh, they're going to definitely have to go 3-1 and one to do it. And they obviously can't lose that game to KU. So love the spot the Jayhawks are in now for the moment. Excuse me, they're in the sole possession of first place. They're up a half game. They have a half game on Texas and lost column. Texas has to hold serve tonight against Iowa State, a team who has not been great at winning road games. Also, huge result last night for West Virginia, who got back on track and absolutely pounded Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State had their up run. They're now kind of suffering through their down run right now. Um, 85 to 67, 23 points for an Eric Stevenson, huge bounce back for West Virginia. They're still on the right side of the bubble. It feels like, but Oh boy, folks, KU on the road, Iowa state on the road, Kansas state at home. Here's what has to happen. They probably need to pull off a one in. Uh, see, thinking out loud here. Because I think they're going to say two and two, but the problem is for them, uh, you'd have to, you're going to have to lose a game in the tournament then, right? So if they win, they beat Kansas, they beat Iowa State, if they beat, if they go two and two, counting one game in the, in the Big 12 tournament, that's going to put them at 18 and 15 if they go there. That's going to be real close, folks. It's going to be real close. But that was a game West Virginia had to have last night, had to have, and they got it. Oklahoma State not in the had-to-have-it territory just yet because of how good they were playing. We said that seven Big 12 wins would do it. They're at seven and eight in the league, 16 and 12 overall. Um, And the good thing for them is, besides the Southern Illinois loss, like the UCF loss is not great, but you can kind of look past it. And also they've got wins on that run where they beat uh, road Oklahoma at Iowa state was a massive, massive feather in the cap. So the season suite of Iowa state is obviously uh, is, is right there. They've got K state at home coming up on Saturday, Baylor at home then on big Monday at Texas tech. So if they pull a one and two here, you feel pretty good because that puts them still at eight conference wins. Now, I wouldn't want them to go one and three the rest of the way because that puts them at what, 17 and 15 and eight and eight and, you know, not eight in the league, but eight conference wins. So that's still tough because of how good the league is. You kind of like where they are right now. Also, some of the stuff's going to depend on what everybody else does. But if you look at uh, where bracketology is right now, and this was updated today. So we got an update today. Uh, Oklahoma State is last four buys right there. And this is at 9 a.m. today right there with West Virginia. So he's got West Virginia and Oklahoma state as the next uh, closest teams to the folks that last four in. So they're still in good shape. Next four out Texas tech has now made an appearance. Here come the red Raiders. The, the role, the uh, run for nine is on guys Two twenty-five. Uh, that's Saturday at noon, Texas. Oh, they got Oklahoma tonight, which is a massive game. But if they can go, if they win these next two games, guys, pretty good situation. Texas Tech. It's going to be interesting. All right, that will do it for today's show. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at LOBig12. You guys can find me at Josh Neighbors underscore. I'm using my Mac laptop today, so that's why I'm a bit closer. We'll figure out the angles as we move forward. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the videos as well. Leave comments. It's always great. Till next time, my friends, as always, stay safe.